Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome everyone to the CICB UX meeting. And um, yeah, maybe let me just kick off by saying and uh, vocalizing one of the read-only items that um, yeah, I updated this uh, template for these discussions like we uh, agreed last time on the last uh, session. And um, I actually really like how it came out. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you all have the same. Well, we'll give it a test right now. And also, of course, it would be nice to um, run a little bit of a retro uh, after some time. So yeah, maybe I'll just uh, drop it to uh, let's uh, to the items that we have on the agenda. And I think the first one is uh, yeah, kind of like talking about the uh, topics that are happening in the stage groups. Uh, what's something interesting and nice, exciting that you want to share about uh, the stage group, about your stage group? And uh, Ian, you have a first item there. Thanks. Uh, I'm really excited to share. We decided to do some thorough investigation and research around. Um, the jobs to be done in job stories for package. We are about to hit a point where we need to decide what we're going to focus on next. And so what we're going to do is reach out to our users and support and sales and anybody else that has an opinion to find out what jobs are actually relevant um, in order to um, convert over to the GitLab package registry and use that information to help guide what features and priorities we have moving next. Um, and those will eventually turn into UX scorecards and heuristics and I'm really excited to start the entire process with user data. I thought that was exciting. <laughs> uh, next up is Hayana. Oop, let me unmute myself. Um, Ian, can you dive into, uh, well, before I go to my topic, dive into the, the, the details of uh, the process and uh, um, kind of the rationale behind it. I'm really curious to hear um, how you folks are going to tackle this in, uh, in package. And I linked here. Uh, the 2020 job to be done calendar for release that Jackie put together and I think it'll be awesome to learn from from your experience. For sure I will let you know how it goes. Um, currently we're trying to figure out and partnering with Lori about what the next steps are and how to capture that data effectively um, but I will definitely share out the results as we get them. Awesome. I think this is super something super exciting because uh, yeah, as with 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 this uh, with the direction that uh, we would like uh, UX showcases and jobs to be done be more involving the um, the real users. I think this is a great well, this is a huge step towards that. Um, so it would be really cool to hear. Thank you. Over to you, Hayana, probably. Yeah, that's kind of stage group topic. Um, but it's, it's nice to, to bring this to, to this call. The Mike and I split um, responsibilities within the release stage. So I'm going to be assigned to risk management and he will be tackling progressive delivery and pages. Um, so I'm not sure, probably Juan and Dimitri. Uh, not, I'm not sure if you have uh, two different PMs. Do they have two different PMs in, the, in Verify as well? Or the only one? Yeah. Well, you do, uh, yeah, we have different. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've been having these discussions and also looked into what the the guys from Package, um, oh my God, my brain, it's like, it's like the conversation from the beginning, it's Friday, so I'm trying to read and trying to <laughs> put into words. Anyways, we look into what other teams are doing uh, and also looked at uh, team strategy and trying to identify um, the functionalities that overlap, so the things that are common for, you know, progressive delivery. Um, and release management, so the CI file, uh, settings, environments, etc. Um, and if you're curious to hear more about what how we've done it, and also um, the release UX team strategy, there's a merge request open. Um, yeah, because I know that Ian also put together, right, together with Tim, uh, a strategy page in the very beginning. Um, so yeah, if you have anything to share also from your experience, uh, on that side, feel free to look into the merge request. But it's kind of a heads up that if you have to, or if you're working with something specific for the reason management, that's me, and for progressive delivery, that will be Mike. We are the assigned DRIs right now. And maybe like a few points uh, about um, why did we go in that direction? Because probably an interesting thing uh, for others to know. Mike, do you want to take over? Yeah, um, mostly we went in that reason 
because Jackie doesn't like me and she doesn't want to work with me anymore. <laughs> that uh, is not true, okay? Look how serious. <laughs> Jackie doesn't want to be Um No, I mean, really, like, it's, it's just difficult to, I mean, one of the big things is meetings, right? Um, we were running this problem where, for me, my entire morning was blue. I think Tayana's entire afternoon was blue. Uh, just doubling up with PMs and meetings and things like that is a huge time sink. Uh, but that, I mean, that is what it is. I don't think that's a driver decision. I think really at the end of the day, it was about priorities, you know, and having to have uh, two sets of priorities and two things to manage. And, you know, both from the PM side, right? The PM had to have two sets of designers that they were working with on initiatives and things like that. But also for Hayana and myself, we had to work with two PMs, right? So there's the, the double priorities kind of went both ways. So I think just syncing those together, uh, to me, is the biggest benefit of that and having a kind of a clear path and a clear person to work with and a clear one vision to kind of focus on um, will greatly simplify things. And less meetings will be nice too. Cool. Yeah, so if anyone will be interested to learn more of, of that, follow Hayana's uh, links and yeah, feel free to ask questions to Mike and Hayana. Yeah, I'm still curious to see how much of that will be coming in the future. Who knows, you know, how much uh, stages will be splitting. And of course, uh, Juan, if you have anything interesting to share with, um, with uh, Mike and Hayana about uh, how you're dealing with Timuti and the Verify um, stage, um, splitting those things would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh... There's nothing like super major that I feel it's happening. Like I think most of the times, I think because Dimitri has been longer here, like he, he many people like associate like pipelines and like whatever pipelines or CICD uh, UX is happening, they think about Dimitri. So he usually like replies to those messages like via Slack or, via, or in the issues in GitLab. He says like, oh, this seems to be something that it's more on the runner or testing areas. And Juan is now in charge of that. And then he tags me and then I chime in and I give my, my thoughts, you know. So, and then I don't think it has happened the other way around, to be honest. But yeah, th that's, <laughs> that's the, the, mostly the interactions, you know, like the, the I think we, we don't have a lot of cross dependencies right now. Like, but we definitely are collaborating in a couple of issues. So one is like, uh, I open an issue that it's gonna fall under him, which is like, uh, uh, Nadia, you were not for this meeting, but when I, I show like new designs for uh, the, sc the screenshot uh, feature that we are trying to release, and then we're gonna be using tabs on that. And what we found out of that meeting is that that's gonna be, um, like exhausting that pattern a lot it's gonna be like it's gonna make the ux not as good you know and like we're already kind of like are hitting a ceiling with that uh with that uh ux pattern so what i did like that's probably gonna fall under dimitri but i went and i created the the issue with all the context that i have really uh like kind of like cross uh posting the issue that i'm that i have with screenshots and whatever and so I don't know, it's very informal, but I think like it's more like ad hoc, like as we work on things, it's like, oh, this is probably something that Dimitri needs to know about, you know, and then like we just take it from there. Does that make sense? Do you guys have, what is the PM situation? Is there, are there multiple PMs in play here or is it? There are three PMs, yeah. Each, okay. each group has a different PM. Okay, so you're, you're both interacting with all three or is it? Uh, actually, there are four PMs because now uh, Verify Indeed. is four groups. So I interact with two PMs like on a daily basis and like he interacts with two PMs. And I think like he he's an interim designer for that group, right, Nadia? Yeah, so the situation is like this. In Verify, there are indeed four groups. Continuous integration, the new templates that Dimitri is interim right now. Then there is testing and there is runner. And for the testing and runner, Juan is the product designer. 
And uh, for each of the four, we will have four, four different people as the product managers. And um, yeah, I guess dependable on how much UX work and research work is needs to be, needs to be done in each of these stage group. Uh, yeah, um, uh, it kind of like determines the workload of, of, of the product designer. So I think for templates, uh, the new stage group that's emerging, we're gonna pretty soon need some help. Uh, yeah, I'm curious how much Dimitri will be able to step in because it seems to be a lot of work there. Uh, but yeah. Cool. So I guess that's something that, uh, you know, like uh, would be probably interesting in the future to share as well experiences uh, or ask more questions. Uh, so yeah, thanks for sharing more. Sure. Um, I see the challenges part in the agenda is kind of empty. Maybe just uh, vocalizing this question. And if anybody is struggling with anything in the stage group that you want to share, ask for help or anything. Sounds like no. Then on to the next one about the, um, uh, what are some of the new methodologies that you are trying in your stage group? I know Juan is... Uh, uh, yeah, I just put something there since uh, that one was empty. But <laughs> yeah, so I think one thing that I'm trying with James, my PN in, in, in testing is that we're kind of like, we, we have this issue that uh, like our boards are very polluted of issues uh, coming from many places. Uh, so it was kind of hard to like, like distill like that into like what's happening in the current uh, milestone and like kind of like understand how things are like going through the workflow. So uh, we came up like with a, like we're testing this right now, but like the idea is that basically we're gonna have uh we have a column with all the open issues right like uh usually those issues are issues that are created by someone uh like that in the past like they describe like a problem in testing uh usually what we what we will do in the past is that that issue itself becomes like the work working issue so like it starts moving so like basically people like if this was created by by a customer uh that issue becomes a working issue and like it moves through all the phases right if it was created by an internal stakeholder the issue becomes the, the working issue if it was created by us so basically all of them were treated equally which is it's okay but that was pretty confusing i think it's kind of hard to like understand which uh, when we're talking about implementation, when we're talking about validation, when we're talking about research, or we're talking about design and whatnot. So I think what we decided is that we're not gonna move those issues into the workflow tax anymore. Uh, so basically what we're trying to do is like, we look at all our open issues and then James goes and he creates validation issues out of that, right? So it's a completely different new issue, which is very clean. It, uh, kind of like ties back to the original issue, but it's just basically describing the problem in a very succinct manner. And then that issue becomes the actual issue that we're gonna work through like the workflows, right? So like, for instance, we have like a usability testing validation item, right? Or uh, So like we validate that on problem validation, then we move that to, uh, uh, we, we have that on the backlog of validation, then we move that to problem validation then we move that to uh, like design, then like solution validation, then back to design, and then finally to development. So I don't know if this is gonna be helpful for anyone, but I think it's working for us because it gives us a very clean slate of what we're working on. And then like the titles make more sense, the content of the issue, it's way better because it, it, it's very clear what's the evolution of the design and like the feature in terms of like where is it right now in terms of uh, work, if it's been worked on, on like in the research area or if it's been worked on the design area. So I don't know, uh, I just wanted to put it out there uh, to see what you guys think about it, but I like it so far. I think it's very, it's a good way to work. Of course, like a lot of the responsibility falls on James. He's the one who basically needs to go and like check out the open issues, move them to the validation backlog with the new issue and then he when 
when things get like close, then he needs to go and like close the original issue. So like, there's still a little bit of uh, manual man, manual workflow going on there, but uh, it definitely helps me a lot as a designer to see it that clean, you know? That's what I wanted to share. Ian Hayana, do you want to vocalize what you're writing? Tell me. Yeah, and no, I'll just add in here the, what we're doing for the for release is that uh, uh, moving to two different boards, first stage groups. So we have the planning board where the validation and the design phase is happening, and then the dev boards where things that you know, were ready, scoped, they move there and then the developers work um, this way. And that means that, yeah, we have to be working ahead. Um, and yeah, Ian, do you want to voice your, your comment as well? Yeah, I was just going to say that package uh, a few milestones ago, I think now, moved to that double board idea. So Tim and Dan, our EM, and I all kind of operate in the planning board. And then once it gets through validation and design and everything is wonderful, um, there tends to be an epic that gets created and then the building issues get added at that phase. And that's how we've been able to stay organized. Um, is like we have our backlog and then we have an issue that goes through the validation and then the follow-ups are created as new issues that are devoted to the actual build of it. Yeah, and we also have those uh, those issues that Jackie and uh, uh, created for like things that need UX attention. So yeah, we have the, the boards the, and the backlog where we should all uh, look for the upcoming items, but then we prioritize them separately um, to kind of help also balance the uh, the workload and bring more <laughs> to our to our priorities. It's it's still pretty new. I think I think we we're doing this uh, based on a package, just an example, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. And uh, um, uh, Juan, um, how does how is working? How is this working with the like with two designers um, on top of the same of the same board, like how do you and Dimitri choose um, what items to prioritize in this in this workflow? Choose quote unquote. <laughs> uh, usually, there's we don't have like an overcross there because uh, although they are both verified, uh, we are both verified. Like usually, like the item hopefully, hopefully will be tagged as group testing or group continuous integration. But I cannot get what you're trying, like maybe what you're trying, uh, what you're trying to say is like, there's gonna be issues that seem to be, it could be continuous integration or testing, right? Uh, or both. And I think that when that happens, like we basically, that's a hard question. Like in the past, I know that like Dimitri has like chimed in in certain things and I have been doing the same on his issues. But I think we kind of like depend on our PMs to like figure out if the issue is theirs or not. So I will say that it's very hands off. It's like, oh, my PM says that this is an issue that belong, belongs to us. So we work on it. Does that make sense? So kind of, um, in a way, rely as well on the PMs, figuring out where, where things yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's just something that I, I had a discussion on this today with Jason uh, Lenny, who is um, the director of the CICD, but also who is an interim pro product manager for the configure. Uh, continuous integration stage group. And um, he, uh, we've been basically talking about this approach that Dimitri is also starting to take so that he is creating like that, the board for the UX, where he would be like basically mirroring these items for the dev in order to have his own backlog. And um, he said that uh, let's make sure that if we are mirroring the items or like if we are creating one, uh, one issue from another one for the UX specifically, let's make sure that we, uh, like have a clear title there, like for example, design a solution for, or like 
uh, like um, uh, yeah, like research that, or they so it's like we don't have two same uh, exact same title for the issues, one on the dev board and one of UX board, uh, because that looks uh, that can look very confusing for the customers, and also uh, um, to avoid using direction labels on the UX items because the direction labels, as we know, there. Uh, show, they're being showed in the um, handbook in the pages sorry not in the handbook but on the gitlab pages uh, where we um, uh, showcase what's going to be delivered in a milestone and of course if that's like for now only research or or uh, you know or like designing a solution that doesn't mean that it's going to go into the milestone so just kind of like fyi all right should we move to the next one? Hayana, your... mm, yeah, the, the, yeah, it's not like a question, but more like a heads up. There is a Slack thread going um, in product um, about a question Jackie and I had yesterday regarding um, opportunity canvas for the experience baselines and the jobs to be done. So we are now rescoring um, our job to be done and I was following the UX research handbook page and it says that when you're doing uh, user interviews, at the end of the interviews, after you collect the data and you collect the insights, you should uh, work together in a PM with an opportunity campus. And that wasn't like super clear what validation process we have to follow when rescoring a job to be done. So that's pretty much the question uh, in the Slack thread. Um, like, do we need an opportunity campus? Yes or no? Um, and the answer from, I think, Scott uh, and Christy was that for a job to be done that we already support, we don't necessarily need an opportunity canvas unless it's a really use of, of time from the designer and the PM. Um, and there's a merge request to update this criteria um, in the handbook. But just a heads up that, you know, for whatever reason, if you're confused or if you think that um, the opportunity canvas will be available, for the experience baseline for the job to be done experience. Um, that's, that was the answer from product. Um, and my second question that is not there, has anyone else uh, started rescoring their, their jobs to be done or have finished it in the, in the last uh, quarter? Silence, okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, I wanted to, Kind of have access or see uh, what others are doing just to kind of to be able to see uh, uh, work from other designers there that was my question i know that dimitri is doing uh quite some research uh his his, his jobs uh, to be done is about um getting uh, on board to GitLab ci and it was a pretty it is a pretty huge topic that actually Funny enough, ended up to be in the templates a stage group that's uh, arising right now. Um, so I know that, he, yeah, he wasn't really rescoring it yet because they are doing some of the smaller corrections with uh, uh, with the engineering, and uh, but he was validating everything that he found with users. Um, so maybe maybe it's uh, maybe you have to ping Dimitri. Yeah, I had a chat with him a couple of weeks ago, and he said that the score was the same. And because of that, um, the like the video, it's quite quite the same because I wanted to see, you know, the the assets or at least the deliverables yeah. um, from other people. And then what Dimitri says is that yeah, there's not it's the same score. Mm, um, I see. So I know that the, a lot of the scorecards, uh, it seems like there is a lot of activity in the growth and enablement um, stage groups. Maybe you want to check with them. Mm -hmm. Let me add note here. Cool. Uh, yeah, and next up is Ian. So quick, wasn't ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the next question that's on the agenda was about, does anybody need any specific knowledge from another area in CICD? There isn't a specific piece of knowledge, uh, but we're working on, we built a dependency proxy, which currently kind of caches versions of Docker images. One of the reasons it's really useful is because we cache it, it accelerates the pipeline, because instead of having to go out to Docker, get the image and pull it back, it's just kind of readily available. We are trying to do some brainstorming around how we can visualize that in the UI. Um, and in the package side, it's pretty easy and it has its own UI, but there was also conversations around like adding the time it saved, 
to a pipeline or um, some other parts of CICD where that kind of comes into play. And so I wanted to raise to everyone, not necessarily to answer the question now, but if you think there could be a way that the dependency proxy helps your area, it would be great if you could jump into that epic. Sorry, yeah, it is an epic now. And kind of give some thoughts or feedback. Um, we're still in ideation, so there's no designs, no anything like that. But if you have an idea of like, oh, it'd be really cool if it did this, um, I'd appreciate it. Next over to Juan. Nice heads up, Ian, thanks. Uh, I just, uh, I didn't know where to put this, so I put it there, uh, but <laughs> uh, basically, I guess that it, 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 it falls under that, but uh, yeah, I recorded a video uh, of how to set up like a CI, a small CI project. I think that that could be helpful for anyone who like needs kind of like I mean, like setting up like a review app is not super straightforward. So like that that video explains well how to do it uh, and like how to use like uh, now, uh, which is like a site a site that site that CO uh, service. It explains like a, a small way of setting setting that up. I think that that could be helpful for it, like for someone if they want to understand like certain aspects of like setting up like your GitLab CI YAML file and how it like you interact with other services outside of GitLab and whatnot. So I don't know. I, I thought I, I would just put that for anyone who's interested on it. Nice. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Juan. Uh, we've been talking about that because, you know, I was trying to uh, um, test and uh, play around with some of the uh, functionality and uh, I was having troubles. Uh, so that can be a nice example to see how you did that. Yeah, you, you honestly threw me for a loop when I watched that because I was like, wait a minute, you cannot deploy a GitLab page on a review app. Like, you can't do it. It's impossible. How did you solve this problem? But it, it was a good example of like, oh, it's just if it's a stat, you can't build and then deploy there, that, that problem. But yeah, so like, it was great because, you know, I mean, this is, you touched on two of my areas and I actually learned something by watching you, so. Okay, um, I'm glad I think, that, <laughs> I, think, I think it's a great, like, you know, don't never assume you know stuff, right? It, it, it's amazing how often, like, you watch somebody on a video do something that you've done a thousand times. Chances are you're going to learn something. Like, wow, I didn't, I didn't, I've been doing this a hundred times. I never had to do it that way. So. Really cool. <laughs> nice. I'm glad that uh, that helped. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so I think I have the next one. Um, so I don't have this clear in my head yet, so I'm going to fumble through this. Uh, but yesterday, and this has come up a number of times, where we kind of run into this, like, how can we make X feature easier? Or we know that, like, we have poor adoption of our features because the discoverability is low. And we also have discussed here in a number of other places, like, we oftentimes run into this kind of cross stage, like, yeah, we want to fix this, but we need this other group to do that. Anyway, so that topic came up yesterday again, um, and Nadia was nice enough to volunteer me <laughs> um, to like, just let's get something happening on this, right? So two things are happening right now. One, I'm working on an issue, trying to articulate this a little bit clearer than I just did there. Um, so I'm working on that issue so we can all participate in that, get an idea of it. And then I think the next step out of that is to have a think big. I think the first one probably like just to talk about the problem, make sure the hypothesis that I just kind of threw out that those are the real problems, are the real problems, um, and then see how we want to tackle it. Uh, but I could turn that, see that turning into a series of like cross stage uh, think bigs. And I know, Jackie, um, that's actually your idea is like, the cross stage things big, I think, are going to be a uh, useful thing. So thank you for this. giving me credit. That was really cool of you. You could have just owned that shit and been like, yeah, I came up with this great idea. I know. <laughs> Look at you. I, I'm hedging the bet. I get credit for it because I wrote it down in the doc and I'm talking about it. But if it, if it goes to hell, I can blame you. So yes. You got to play like the fence on these mm. things. <laughs> um, so like I said, I, it's not super clear right now, but it's one of the things I'm working on today. I, I don't know if I'll get it finished today, but that effort is coming. 
freaking awesome. I think that's an amazing idea. And apparently this makes Ian super happy as well <laughs> for like a creator of the Think Week. So another credit your way. You wanted to, I've seen it secretly, you've been um, typing a comment. I want you to vocalize that. It sounded like a nice idea. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited that the Think Things are happening because they all came from a random meeting with Tim and I that just blew up into a thing that actually is really effective. So that just makes my heart sing because I'm a process nerd. Um, it would be cool just as an outside initiative to like partner with the product management team for CICD and start having those like large scale um, vision conversations about what CICD could be. Um, and I wonder if that would enable us to have the trickle down effect of like, oh, we heard it think big that uh, pipelines are doing this thing and it would be really cool. And then on my side, I could be like, I heard that and on package, we could do this too. And it could create a much more inclusive stage. Um, so I, I'm excited by the idea. Are you getting increasingly blurry? We started this meeting and you were a little blurry and now you're super blurry. <laughs> what is happening? There we I go. fidget. So the camera starts and it's like you're in focus and then I fidget and I move back and then I'm not in focus, but it tries to focus. And then I realize that I'm not in focus. So I move forward and it all just, then it stops trying. It just gives up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, good point, Ian. I guess we will be seeing that. Uh, I think that would be nice to do at some point um, when we start with this. Uh, I think that would be exciting. All right, Kayana, over to you. Yeah, um, still on the topic of cross stage dependencies, we have uh, a few current and upcoming items in release related to environment variables um that also happen in verify so um i linked all those issues i mean some of those issues there and my suggestion was to collaborate like in a prototyping phase because there's a proposal from from dimitri uh from i don't know months ago um that i think it's a good start but first it wasn't validated and also doesn't consider all the use cases for uh release that we have for, for the environment sections of the settings page. Uh, it's a good thing that Jack is here because uh, we've been discussing this issue uh, for a couple of days or weeks now, uh, but I would like to assign a specific DRI because it's uh, different teams and different designers working on the same page. Dimitri is not here though, but Juan, you can uh, uh, perhaps give some, I don't know, uh, some input on, um, how you see the collaboration happening there um and yeah it's it's something that we can definitely take over from a release point of view it crosses with both release management and uh, progressive delivery so mike and i we also need to to be in sync but it's this one setting page that everyone <laughs> touches at some point and it's going to become confusing especially that dimitri's uh, um proposal is like to work in a model while mine it's just on the same page. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a mess right now. And I just wanted to uh, clarify this before we move forward. Um, that yeah, we have multiple DRIs for the same thing. Just to be clear, we're talking about that section in the settings where you want you set up your variables, right? Yeah, CIC, yeah. settings, CICD, environment variables. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of troubles with this page. I mean, there's too much content and we keep adding <laughs> variables and uh, input fields there um, it's not usable at all and the responsiveness is also a mess so Dimitri's proposal if you're not looking at the issue now but is to uh, bring the creation of variables to a model uh, and that's super awesome um, but yeah we need to consider the the edge cases and use cases also for what we're planning on uh, on release management and progressive delivery. Um, and it's just unclear now who's the DRI. But uh, Jackie, do you know, uh, I think our issues move to the backlog, but do you know if we're gonna touch this with the environments, uh, um, job to be done in the environments uh, uh, interviews? Is there something so that you want to be working on? So the surveys that I have the, the questions that I have in the survey today are very focused on the environment views and how people are using actual environments. Mm -hmm. So environment variables might come up and as we start to 
dive into secrets management and supporting Vault HashiCorp as our de facto secrets management tool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't, I haven't created any issues to deep dive into how environment variables are being used today. It's mm-hmm. just that, just environments. Okay. Yeah, I know that from a progressive delivery point of view, there is a lot of uh, things that we want to do now with the environment variables. I actually worked on the issue during 12.7 that became like three different issues. Uh, and I know that this page is going to keep changing. So just a heads up that whatever happens, we're three people working on it. So uh, Hannah, your point was to find, uh, to assign like one person from, uh, from release and verify uh, to tackle, to solve that problem. Yeah, I think it would be good to have a contact point so that we could, for example, uh, set up, I don't know, a sync or a way to keep uh, each other in the loop and also bring this to, to yeah. the group. Uh, because this is going to keep happening, it's just like the CI file, the settings, like all those pages that uh, uh, we share or we, we touch these functionalities. But in this case, it's really a completely different interface. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that some of, at some point, the, the front end team from Verify, they start working on this and they stopped oh. because we figured out that it was different uh, from what was pro- being proposed by release. It's uh, really nice of you to bring this up, uh, this kind of, uh, I think it's really nice that someone is able to spot, uh, to spot that. Um, and yeah, and I, and I think your suggestion to just find one person who will be responsible for that and maybe all three will participate. Uh, but yeah, maybe you can, you can, you can take a little bit for, for further and just make sure that, uh, yeah, that that's aligned. I don't know what's the best way. Um, yeah involving people but uh yeah it sounds like you are well in spot here um i'll make sure to sync with dimitri uh he will also he'll be out of office for a couple of months right a couple of weeks so i uh, no, he's back on uh, tuesday okay but he um, okay I'll, I'll check with him because uh, he has uh, some holidays planned in february yes coming up yeah so okay then i'll sync with him and then uh, with Juan, and then we'll see how to move forward Thanks. you make this model if we make this model, if, are we going to be able to see the existing variables in the model as well? I think just to add it. Okay. Just to create and add it from what I understood from Dimitri's proposal. Uh, okay, that makes sense. But I don't know. Like, I have some thoughts about that. Maybe we can talk about it offline. But like, okay. if we're, if we're going to do that, like, that's an opportunity to actually bring in environment variables to like other places for like, uh, it's very needed. Like for instance, when you are setting up your uh, GitLab CI YAML file, that's like an area where you really need to have like that context of your environment variables. So like it will make sense that you can just open it there, see that in context with the variables that you already have set up, and you just set up your environment variables without ever leaving the editor. That will be like a nice feature. But I don't know. Uh, <laughs> We can also treat this like as a job to be done, you know, because since it's yeah. uh, a cross stage uh, uh, opportunity, we can all work on, on this and then figure yeah. out. Okay, I'll, I'll open an issue and then I'll sign you in the meeting on it and we can, we can follow up. Sounds good. Sounds good. Nice, awesome. Awesome, then Ian. Yeah, so next up is user research. Um, I am going to be coordinating with Lori when she becomes available. Um, I mentioned earlier that I'm doing the jobs to be done research, which is looking at all the jobs and the like individual tasks related to a job. Um, and I'm trying to get a robust array of data in terms of what's important and what's not. So I was hoping to get some assistance in terms of um, how do I reach out to support and get them to engage and rate things? How do I reach out to sales? Um, Cause seeing what they think is important compared to what they hear in deals is really important there helps us understand the relevance of things as well as users themselves, internal and external. Like I'd really like to get a robust set of data. Um, so um, that's what I would love some, some help with. Um, I can help you getting you in touch with the needed people from uh, customer success uh, sales. I, I've, t- I've talked to someone from customer success and he was like, yeah, we are here. We would love to engage in the conversations like that. I uh, haven't really been yet involved with sales um but i can help you figuring out people uh, who we can work there with i also was even um in touch with uh, uh ryan 
uh, forgot his name, the, the analyst uh, who is often at the uh, Jace, Jason's meetings, uh, who is like the, 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 uh, the domain uh, analyst basically, and uh, he was bringing a lot of like data from, uh, you know, from like um, Forrester Gartner, their expectation in all of that. It's, I, I found that very interesting. So we could work together on that. Uh, I can help you to uh, get in touch with those people. Yeah, that would be perfect. My big open question right now that I would like to ask Lori is, um, what's the best way to capture all of that data knowing that there's so many avenues I wanna pursue? Um, right now it's set up in an issue and I could use reactions and thumbs up and thumbs down and that could help. The problem is that you create a bias. The more people that fill it out, the more things seem important because they have reactions. So later on the participants data is more swayed and biased. So I'm just trying to figure out how to solve for that in an efficient and quick manner. So I don't want 14 surveys that I have to deal with, but I also, you know, don't, I want robust and good clean data. So yeah. that's my open question. Uh keep us posted as you get an answer from Lori. <laughs> <It's interesting, laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, interesting one. For sure. Uh, I think you're up next, Nadia. Uh, yeah, just kind of like a heads up uh, about the, again, the new uh, stage group that's um, emerging in um, Verify. Um, so Tao moved from CI to the template stage group. Uh, she's going to be the responsible PM there. And um, that was uh, about to be a heads up for Lori that we just had a meeting today with uh, Tao and Jason talking about what is this stage group going to be about. By the way, heads up for everyone uh, on this call. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of over overlap with uh, with progressive delivery, with release management, with package, with testing, with runner, with everyone. And so I feel like that that uh, new stage group will be kind of like um, a little bit on its own and a lot with everyone else. Um, and uh, like there is a whole backlog of, uh, now my camera is blurry. Um, there is a whole backlog of um, uh, issues related to onboarding and, um, and guidance of the user and a, a lot about that uh, YAML templates as well. Um, and I feel like there's going to be a heavy research need there and Tao will need support uh, with that uh, of Lori and of Dimitri in the first uh, step. So just a heads up for that. So uh, this is the group that we were talking about that was potentially going to focus on onboarding and correct um because i mean the way i'm reading it now it sounds like it's more template focused but is it just template focused but it is going to do this other stuff or is it it's it, it's a good it, question it, it's just confusing it, it, i asked because like we, we you know we talked about that kind of going back to that think big thing yesterday right i think we've all been hoping that this team is going to be the silver bullet um, so like, yeah, that, um, that's where so my question comes the, the work for this uh, new stage group is a YAML template, uh, and a lot of onboarding. So it's kind of like a, a mashed potato together. Uh, but that, that's the two, that's the two, uh, goals of this new stage group that we've been discussing today with Jason and with Tal. And um, actually, I will right now paste um, an epic, and there is a video. So I'll paste here an epic uh, and a video of our discussion, an epic where all of the um, uh, issues for that new stage group are listed. So everyone who is interested, you can just go and see what type of, of work uh, they will be starting with. I'll paste it right now. Uh, right now. Um, okay. So. Uh, I know that uh, we are one minute over the time of this session. So my first question, uh, do we make this session one hour or do we keep it at 45 minutes? I think 45 minutes and if it buffers over a little bit, is fine. I mean, it's nice to, it's nice to have that, that goal, but if we're having great conversations and it overflows, the chances of somebody scheduling over that 15 minutes is low. So to me, that, that works best this way as the hybrid. And it's not, it seems like that's okay. It seems like that's a re reasonable way to do. Why I'm asking because it's like 24th, it's close to the 19th. Um, and I know that we had um, some of the retrospective issues open and I wanted to see, should we bring this up right now? Should we talk a little bit about some of the things that uh, Maybe some of us plays there. Someone wants to complain about something. Someone wants to mention something good. 
I usually adore complaining. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Um, but I actually did squeeze in that 15 minute meeting. I'm running a little bit late, so I'm gonna have to drop off. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Bye everyone. Have a Enjoy great weekend. weekend. Bye. So I guess that, that that's the, is that the data point that proves the rule or is that like, <laughs> Um, I made a suggestion, I think, all the way up there that um, it's awesome that we consider the UX uh, um, retrospective issue, but perhaps we can also bring our own stage group issues there. Um, because, for example, some of the points that we make in the UX uh, retrospective issue, they're not the same as the one that we make in the team. Uh, so I think I misunderstood your comment then. So what you are uh, you are saying is that we need to make our own to the uh, uh, relative to the CSV. No, no, no. Exactly what you did now. So you linked the UX uh, retrospective, but I'm also saying uh, for us to bring the points from our team retrospectives, like the engineering. To release, oh yeah, like, yeah. Because we have. Uh, are the issues so yeah. i'm just link here yeah time. and uh, i didn't so i placed this type of a little bit of a comment i yeah i didn't have time to uh, to bring up every, uh, every stage group retro issue yeah but yeah please i can start since i was talking right <laughs> yeah. i didn't go over the ux retro yet because i always have troubles figuring out is this 12.7 or 12.8 or whatever because we work in different timelines um but i think in general positive thing was the the team split or that we we had a conversations about it and we finally <laughs> did something about it mike and i um because we've been having so many calls and uh, you know we, we're sharing responsibility on a lot, a lot of things and i think splitting up will bring clarity clarity to to the teams on you know this person is the dri for this specific functionality uh but also this is the person that belongs to this team um yeah, so that was definitely a positive thing. Um, and one, not negative, but it always happens is that often have, not related to CICD, but often have uh, uh, issues being brought up like mid milestone that they already have UX uh, proposals that were not reviewed by UXers. Um, I mentioned before that we are moving to you know, those two different boards and hopefully this will help us a lot with their with the with this problem but it's always a case that there is something that it's considered super minimal and i have an issue here to give an example was like add a button here right but this button it's just like the environment's uh, 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 interface that's three teams working on it uh, but the proposal seems so straightforward um, that the engineering team just starts having conversation on how to implement it so what is the conversation again for us to have with the, with the PMs and the team as a whole um, that, yeah, it might be simple, but let's see if this really, this is really what we want to achieve. And the, the, in this example specifically, we had uh, one of our developers um, that he was super attentive and say, hey, I, I want UX uh, you know, approval here before with this thing. And that's where we figured out that there's a lot of overlapping. Yeah, those are the bumps. It always happens because there is a proposal that seems to to be in it. Can I see this issue? Yeah, I'm gonna find it for you. It was something on progressive delivery. Oh, thank God! I was like panicking and started to like stress sweat. I was like, <laughs> no. And I, I'm gonna say it, really, but Jason's proposal always are very direct to the point. It sounds super sound, right? They're like, oh yes, let's implement this, but uh, they might not. Uh, what we want to to deliver um, and I always have these discussions with the developers we had in two issues I had in two issues this milestone uh, so release 12.7 right um, that the developers come at me and say should I be doing this but he's told me this way it's already in the issue and it seems so clear uh, I'm gonna find for you and I'm gonna link here yeah because here's um, here's something that I am uh, trying to enforce oh, we're getting like some feedback here Okay, perfect. Um, so I am going through each of my issues before I drop them on the build board and making sure that if they have any front end component, they 
have designs on them and if they don't have a front end component and they're only back end i make sure that a front end person adds a weight just in case so it doesn't even get on the build board until after it gets confirmed that there isn't a front end experience so I think that that's something that we can start enforcing like on the product management side, I can start percolating with PMs about a way to solve some of that. Um, yeah, this looks like a really straightforward implementation. It doesn't need a UX view because sometimes like product is obviously just thinking about their area and not understanding what this looks like across other areas either. Yeah. And, uh, I think our, our, the, our engineering team, they do a great job by figuring out when those gaps, they, when they happen. And, uh, um, and something that I brought up in the release to your team retrospective, um, but that's, I don't know, I think in general, everyone needs to be a bit more attentive because I don't think they would move forward with a backend proposal without check backenders, right? Or a front-end new component just because someone suggested. And that's kind of the analogy I made. That's if something seems very straightforward, just make sure that there is a UX check right, uh, on it. Uh, but I agree. I think that with the, with the two boards, Lenny and Dev, this is going to happen uh, uh, less and uh, yeah, we're just gonna be continuously educating ourselves. <laughs> yeah, brilliant point. I think that's a uh, often thing, unfortunately, and a very nice analogy uh, that you were saying, Kayana. Uh, so I think like uh, if we see that, we should take that and uh, bring it out. Um, curious. Uh, well, Mike, Juan, maybe especially because uh, Mike is with Kayana on the same stage. Uh, have you seen something like that? Does it uh, happen in your um, stage group? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, I think it's always gonna happen, right? Sometimes it's like it's that you don't know what you don't know kind of thing, right? So it's like this thing seems simple, so let's just do it. Makes sense because you know that's how you get stuff done. Uh, but and it's great to move forward fast and get things done that just need to be done that makes sense to. But then there's a, like that always, yeah. Like some of my favorite design work is that is that day when you spend three weeks investigating you know, and it, it results in one button, but it really did require that three weeks of investigation. So it's just, it's, it's the price of doing business, right? Like it's, it's, there's always going to be the robust design versus like hindering speed. Um, so it's, it's just something you got to look out for. And I think the best way to handle it is what, what Jackie was talking about is great, but also, you know, it's just, we need engineers to get it. And, the more you work with them, the more they do, right? I think it takes one time of working an engineer through that process of like, yeah, no, it's not just the button and here's why. And then, then they're like aware of the process. So, you know, my thoughts. Cool, okay. Um, Okay, anything else from uh, uh, from you, Kayana, or from anyone else? Uh, any things that we want to like bring up in particular? You know, what I would like to see us is, is having more of this uh, cross stage uh, discussions, like within CA, and uh, for us to not just do it you know, from a design, like for the design of the like distinct big sessions. I think they're a great idea bringing the PMs together uh, to build this, uh, this shared vision. Um, and I would love to have a way to see where things overlap and see what's planned for that and how do I fit in this plan? Um, because right now it's like what I mentioned before with the example, I see something that Dimitri is working on and then it's up to us to figure it out. And most of the times, because no one knows how to move forward with it, it gets pushed back to the backlog. But how can we push these conversations forward instead? Uh, so I said, this channel, um, it's a great, you know, it, it's a great uh, uh, platform to have this conversation. So I really, I really appreciate that we have these these calls bi-weekly now. Nice. I actually, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, last three minutes, I really enjoyed it. I, yeah, like this this type of questions that are there in the agenda right now, I think they're really super relevant, and I hope they're gonna help addressing the items that you, Hayana, just uh, 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 mentioned.
anything from anyone else before we all I'm the only PM that joins this is there a reason you're the only one who cares about us maybe <laughs> 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 I think there's a reason at least on my side is that I don't think I have told my PMs, but I, I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna invite them to this meeting. Okay, yeah, because I think I'm I think it's only me, Jason, and Orit that are invited from the product side. Um, so it might be good to see this up to tell the people. For sure. I think it's like open. Oh, please, Ephraim. Uh, it's an open invite. Uh, I think that those people who have ever like accepted or something uh, who are showing up in the invite, but yeah, please. Do you, a question to you, Jackie. Do you find this session valuable for you? Should we, uh, should we uh, market to others, uh, other PMs more, do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, it's valuable in that I like to connect with all of you and see how I can help. Um, I would say that the first half of this meeting, I end up like using it to also do other things because it's just kind of like listening. And then when something's relevant, I'll duck in um, mainly because this is like the time zone crunch where I often have like overlaps with a bunch of other people. Um, so I attend because I do find there's value in understanding the struggles you're having. So then I can change things on my side. And I think it would be worth having more product people come. I'll invite my PM, and I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, explain. explain. Uh, uh, um, perhaps we can also exper experiment with doing like a UX, CICD UX group conversation, you know, and then this would be the moment where we can communicate to stage uh, um, initiatives to not just the PMs, but whoever. I love that idea. Uh, my idea. See, I take ownership of my idea. <laughs> hey, I think I should buy a bag of uh, chocolate medals and send it to everyone on this call. <laughs> or something like that. On a star. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good one. Um, uh, I think it's a good yeah, I think my role on the team is to always state things negatively since everybody else is so positive. My fear in PMs joining this meeting is I do think there is value in us talking as UX team about UX stuff that inherently always does involve, you know, the product as well, but there would be a temptation for it to turn into a like planning kind of like strategy of what we're going to accomplish and less about peer design topics. So I would be in favor of both. Right? I think it's valuable to have the group conversation i think going back to the whole think thing thing helps us there but i wouldn't hate to lose designer on designer discussions mike, mike. So you, you mean that uh you would uh, sorry jackie not invite pms basically to this meeting are you voting for leave this ux for uxers and then for example set up the ux the cict group conversation for everyone the, well, I, I, what i'm saying is I, I like the way jackie does it right like she shows up she doesn't have an agenda. If she wants to participate, she participates. But if it, it, she hasn't like driven the conversation away from like our topics. Um, so that would be my only fear is not every PM in the world is as great as Jackie, right? No, I mean, there's just a, right? You get a lot of PMs together and they're gonna wanna talk about PM stuff, right? You get a lot of UXers together, they wanna talk about UX stuff. I just wanna make sure this meeting kind of remains a UX stuff kind of conversation. So maybe the solution here is that I'm the DRI for product and I just am responsible for posting in the product Slack channel things that I learned from this call. Like the CICD PMs channel, I can, I can do that, that action if we don't want to open this up to more PM. Yeah, I think both conversations, I think both, having both would be valuable. I just don't want to lose this one, right? It's, um, yeah. I think a group conversation with PMs is, would be fantastic. Much like this has been fantastic, right? We didn't, we used to not have this call. We did this call. It's been great. I just don't want to lose that. Maybe we can add on to it as opposed to replace it. Perhaps we can have like once a month a standing call, like this very same call, but we do aggregation. Then we invite PMs and other people, but then we still lead the conversation, right? Just like what the team does, they like the what you group. 
we have our slides. These are the topics that we want to present. Because I agree with Mike, once we open the agenda too much, then we're going to be either talking about planning or not about anything at all, because people won't really know what to, to bring to, to the table. Uh, and I personally would like to have things a bit more structured so that we kind of know what our goals are, the conversations we want to have with PMs. But I think like Ian and more, but I think we have so much to learn, for example, from Tim and Ian and the ways they work together or to understand you know, people are doing uh, um, the Opportunity Canvas, for example, with the, together with their designer. I think we can use this uh, moment with PMs to get a bit more knowledge, but <laughs> not yet, <laughs> but uh, still. Uh, I have an idea. Could we make this one? Uh, so we have, uh, this one is bi-weekly, right? So what we could do is like, we keep this one uh, bi-weekly and then we add another one on top of this one, right? Like, uh, which is a monthly one with the same title, but it says like product, product, sync up you know like ux product sync up so like it's only visible to us as uxers that like uh like it's at the same slot mm -hmm. but then like basically we know that that day is the day that the pms are coming and we're going to be talking about like more broad topics yeah i think taking all of this feedback from all of you into account i will just uh yeah probably like uh replace like every fourth or every third session we can invite everyone we can update the invites in in perspective to that so if everything if everyone is uh, good with that i'm just gonna uh, change it so we don't add another session but we take like one of these and turn it into like once in a while with the pms would it still be valuable for me to come to your every one of these sure if you if it's you up want. to you guys like yeah. i don't have to be here no it is as i <laughs> said i think i think you yeah i think it was great having you today jackie and indeed like you're not you're not annoying so you're allowed to come <laughs> <laughs> actually this is like uh us telling you hey don't come ever again no, i'm just kidding yeah i, I can feel that one Thank you. <laughs> i switched stage groups trying to get away from you and now you keep showing up <laughs> So the truth arises, Mike's like, I'm oh, done no. with management, bro. I'm out. Just kidding. Just kidding. There's, anyway. there's, there's kernels of truth in every joke. <laughs> yeah, they say true. Anyway, we're five minutes over. I don't want to keep people who are especially like that's the last thing before, uh, I don't know, the Friday evening dinner or beer or wine or whatever. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. Thanks. I, I really enjoyed this session. Thank, thanks, everyone, who contributed. And uh, yeah, I talk to you on Monday. Bye, y'all.